Hi, I'm Francois. Welcome to the channel. Hey guys, this production music live with the sound design tutorial. I'm Francois and I'm going to show you how to take the mini version 3 and make the Stefan Butzin kind of lead sound here in Ableton. And you see we are using the mini, but we are also using a couple of Ableton effects here. So what I'm going to do, I'm going to start from scratch here in the back in this part. I'm going to duplicate the channel that we already played here. Quickly going to solo this one. And you see we are using the auto filter here. But first let's try to get the sound right and start from scratch. So we are going into the mini and we are selecting the blank preset. So I'm selecting the one that comes with Arturia, blank, and this is what it looks like. By default, all our oscillators are turned off. Also, I want to take off all the audio effects here in the back. So I'm quickly going to group all of them and group and take them off. So we have the raw sound of the plugin. I'm also going to take off the chain here on my kick bass group. Okay, so we're playing these notes here. What we see, we have a lower note here, then we have overlapping notes here. So we are working with the glide function and we have the same thing here and here. This is the line we are playing, the melody line. I'm going back into the synth now and we are going to put in the first oscillator and that's currently sitting at the saw wave or the saw tooth and we're going to use that one, just put it on. So this is what we're playing right now. Note that I have the pitch 12 semitones up here. So I'm actually playing um, C2 to C3, that octave down here, and I'm going down up to C5, but I'm playing everything one octave higher. Um, it's just the way I made that sound in this case. And uh, what I want to do now is bring the first oscillator down to 16 in the range, or no, to uh, 32 actually. So take this knob, turn it down. So we are working with the blank template here and we're activating the first oscillator. We're setting it into sawtooth mode and we're setting the range to 32. And keep the volume at the mid range here. Okay, and the first thing we want to do is put on the glide and put the decay off down here. So glide on, decay off. So give the notes the opportunity to slide into each other and also put the glide knob up a little here to have glide action actually going on. And you also want to turn off this polyphonic knob here because we want to play monotonic. We want to play only one voice at a time. Turn it off. There we go. Volume up, this is the output volume of the synth. And now we want to mix in more oscillators. So we are going to put on the switch of the second oscillator and that one is going to be set to saw triangular, this one here. And also put the level up a little bit on this guy. And we're going to keep it at eight at this octave. And now go down to the third oscillator, also switch that one on and set it to 
like three o'clock here or to the value eight and turn that one to the uh, lowest version here to the triangular wave and the triangular wave adds a little bit of sub in there so um, kind of like a sine wave but a little different and turn that one down to 16. And also we want to add in a little bit of noise, so switch on the noise section here and turn the volume down to 9 o'clock. So we have a little bit of noise in there now. And now we're moving over to the filter section here, filters and amplifiers down here. First take a look at the filters, actually what we're going to do is switch both keyboard follow controls on and now take a look at the cutoff frequency here. What is it doing? Not too bad, but we want to design it slightly different. So what we're going to do is go down to the loudness contour here, which is our amplifier at the end of the synth. And we're actually going to put the decay up to around 600 keep the attack time low here and take down the sustain level. We want a little bit of a attacky decay part on our sound here. Take sustain level to something like two and a half o'clock or 7.2, like you see the values down here always. And you see we are getting this little bit of a click now. And this is because now we are following this curve and we can shape our filter a little bit. Put decay up to 600 here as well. So what happens now, it kind of follows this envelope. First, the attack time is very short, so it starts the sound right away. But then it takes the decay time to fall down onto the sustain level here. And we can Put that one up a little bit as well, put it up to two. Okay, so that's good enough for now. Voice detune up a little. Put it to two, around two here. And let's open up those arrows here. So we have these parts where we can edit LFOs and modulation and stuff like that. We want to MIDI sync our LFO. And now if we hover over the rate down here, it says tempo and put that one to tempo times 1.5. But we don't hear anything so far because we have to assign this LFO to a certain knob here. So modulate it. So what we do is we take the source in the modulation matrix source LFO. So this guy here with a sine wave, following a sine wave in the movements and modulation destination is going to be our cutoff frequency here. So destination cutoff. Okay. And now the amount of the modulation is still at zero. So we have to kick it in a little. Put up this amount here. Cool. So now we have this LFO going on and our color frequency is modulated with the LFO. So we have movement inside of this sound. No effects now. So vocal filter, chorus and delay remain off and no motion recorders and no arpeggios. Closing this one. And now we can take a look at our effect chain in Ableton. So it's supposed to sound like this. And what we're 
what we have so far is this. Okay, quite close, but like we really need those effects still. So what we're going to do, put on this group again and go through them bit by bit, we're taking the later ones off and saturator is the first one we are taking. So from our Ableton audio effects here, we are taking the saturator and we are putting the drive up to 10 decibels and drive it up all the way. It's a lot louder now, with the soft sign here. <laughs> So we're just beefing up the sound and also we are adding in an auto pan. So panning automatically from left to right uh, with a certain amount at this rate. This is our sidechain compressor. I'm going to skip that one. And here we have an EQ8 and we're rolling off low end because that's going to be played by our sub bass and some high end as well. Okay, and on top of that, we're adding in a little bit of reverb, which we don't have inside of our synthesizer. So take any reverb you can find and put in some decay time around a second and drive it up to 20%. The size shouldn't be too big. We want to have this more club oriented so the room should feel like a club. And also we put in a simple delay after the reverb in this case. So we are going four to six Feedback up, drive it up. Okay, and now an important thing here, our auto filter. That one is automated. So that one really gives the movement to the sound over the frequencies. And also we are using the built-in LFO of the auto filter a little bit at the rate of a 32 note here and a little bit of amount. So we're getting in a little bit of movement if I'm just dragging this up. So I was looking to get this kind of vibrato vibe in there and um, I made it with the LFO inside of the auto filter here, which is playing the PRD algorithm. And we are automating the filter here. And the drive is up a little bit and the resonance is up also a little bit. Now I can play it together with our bass. Okay, so all these sounds are also part of our Arturia Mini Melodic Techno sound pack. You can check the link in the description if you're interested in this sound and in a lot more sounds that sound like kind of Stefan Bertzin and other tracks and artists that sound like ethereal techno, melodic techno and stuff like that. So a lot of stuff in there. And of course, in the beginning, we also beefed it up a little bit with our mastering chain. But in general, this is how you achieve this kind of sound. You start with the source in the mini, but since the mini doesn't have too many like audio effects built in, what you want to do is go back to your DAW and then add such an effect chain more or less. This one here is a sidechain compressor. It's not that important. 
just add those effects manually to achieve more of this powerful sound. So I hope you enjoyed this tutorial. Check the description for a sound pack, also for this entire template and a melodic techno course from start to finish. Subscribe to our channel and I hope to see you next time.